Gas prices in the U.S. have soared to a new record high. The price of gas has already topped $5 per gallon in 13 states. The national average is 60 cents higher than just a month ago and almost $2 more than this time last year. Carter Evans has more. It's not just sticker shock anymore. Painful pump prices aren't going away anytime soon. Too damn high. It's ridiculous. The national average is just pennies away from $5 a gallon. And in these 13 states, prices are soaring even higher. In Illinois, up 88 cents in just the last month. I just wish they'd come back down. <laughs> it's going to affect the summer. At $6.37 a gallon in California, a family of four here is spending $600 a month or more on gas, according to oil analyst Tom Closa. We've had an ascent that's like the ascent of Mount Everest. July is anything goes. That's because millions of Americans are back on the move, not willing to put off that summer vacation any longer. How high is it going to have to get before people actually really pull back on driving? Well, that's an experiment in progress right now. And some are reaching a tipping point. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better, and everyone needs to brace for that. If I see it hit $6, that's it. That could easily happen. Hurricane season has just begun, and half the nation's oil refining capacity is along the Gulf Coast. And if a hurricane hit and knocked 10% of our refining capacity offline. What would that do? I think a hurricane really alters the calculus. Then you get into the 6 to $7 uh, a gallon range. Do you see gas prices getting back into the $3 a gallon range anytime soon? Not this year. Not this year. Now, to get the best mileage, we've all heard about checking your tire pressure and driving slowly. But the biggest way to save immediately at the pump is to stop using premium gas. If your car doesn't say it's required, then you don't need it. It has no benefit. And at a gas station like this, you'll instantly save 30 cents a gallon. All Lana? right. Good suggestion, Carter. Thank you. For more now, I want to bring in John Lear. He is the chief economist for Morning Consult. John, let's just start with the most pressing question. When will gas prices stop rising? Thanks for having me, Lana. You know, there's a lot of headwinds right now for gas prices, and we're seeing this with a lot of the sort of what I'll call geopolitical uncertainty, particularly coming out of Russia and Ukraine. We know that Europe is trying to wean itself off of Russian oil and gas. I think that's going to continue to exert upward pressure on those prices in the near term. Um, so as your prior sort of commentator noted, I don't expect to see gas prices easing over the course of this year. Uh, and then, of course, there are sort of so many other ways in which gas prices directly affect consumer prices because it's an input to so much of the things that we consume. Right. So how high do you think it'll go, John? I'm fairly optimistic that inflation overall is sort of getting ready to turn over and we're likely to see some prices start to fall, particularly on the used car front and some of these other pandemic uh, affected uh, issues. I think one of the really big concerns right now, though, is just that the, the areas where prices are elevated, particularly around food uh, uh, and, and energy prices, hit consumers so directly, and it's really difficult for them to reallocate spending away from those staples. Yeah. Well, let's talk about, instead of inflation, stagflation, because the World Bank is warning that the global economy could suffer a 1970s-style stagflation. Explain what causes it and how concerned you are about that. And so the World Bank is coming out and saying that they're, they're likely to see or we're likely to see a world in which we experience elevated inflation and fairly low or stagnating economic growth. And that's kind of the worst of both worlds. Um, I think one of the things, and I, I brought it up earlier, is you know we see in the U.S. just how disproportionately affected lower income adults are when they face elevated energy and food prices. The same is true globally. And so as these prices hit other countries as they hit uh, the developing world in particular, those countries are really ill suited to address uh, those challenges. So, so I think that's that's really what's concerning. And I think that's what the World Bank tried to explain today is just how um, a lot of the, the sort of in temporary inflation that we're likely to face here in the U.S. over the next, let's say, six months is likely to be more of a lasting problem in the developing world. All right. Well, let's let's focus on inflation because we know how real that problem is. In a Senate Finance Committee hearing Tuesday, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said that the U.S. is currently facing, quote, unacceptable levels of inflation. How much of these rising prices are to be blamed on the Fed? I think a lot of the blame lies in a, in a mixture of, of sources. I think it's important to remember that you know there's a counterfactual here, which is that we could have had lower inflation and much higher unemployment if we look back 
two years ago. We could have had higher interest rates over the course of the pandemic and really not done as much to support the jobs market. I do think the Fed was a little slow in, in making that change. They were a little behind the curve. So that's one of the reasons why I think folks are so concerned. Not only maybe were they too late in uh, raising interest rates, but they might also, you know, they, they're, they're potentially um, losing credibility with financial markets and with consumers. Uh, potentially very concerning then. Um, but but I want to dig in a little bit more because, as you've noted, despite record high inflation and rising interest rates, U.S. jobs continued positive growth in May, according to monthly consults, monthly jobs and labor report. John, we know that the monetary tightening often has a potential to curb hiring, and yet the labor market still remains strong. Tell us what's going on. I think what we're seeing play out right now is very consistent with what we would have expected, which is that tightening financial conditions take five to seven months to really play out in terms of the the impact on, on the jobs recovery. Consumer demand remains very robust in the U.S. despite um, record low consumer confidence. And so, you know, as we see the year play out, that's when I start getting more and more concerned about jobs growth, particularly towards the end of the summer and beginning of the fourth quarter. That's when those tighter financial conditions driven by the Fed are likely to impact businesses' hiring decisions and their investment decisions. So still lots of gray on the forecast there. All right, John Lear, thank you. Thank you.